are in Shakespeare's plays representations of great female-female relationships. One which I wish to signal now from Midsummer Night's Dream is the relationship between the Queen of the Fairies, Titania, and a mortal woman whom she loved. The mortal woman is pregnant, <laughs> near term, as we should say, and the woman dies giving birth to a child. We know that the Queen of the Fairies, Titania, wants to raise that child out of love for the woman who has died. Oberon, her husband, wants the boy, for it is a boy to raise as a boy should be raised. Titania, alienated from Oberon, tells of her joy in the relationship with that earthly woman, in the context of which there comes what to me is one of the most poignant lines in all of Shakespeare. The fairy land, says she to Oberon, buys not the child of me. His mother was a votress of my order. And in the spiced Indian air by night, full often has she gossiped by my side and sat with me on Neptune's yellow sands, marking the embarked traders on the flood when we have laughed to see the sails conceive and grow big-bellied with the wanton wind, which she, with pretty and with swimming gait following, her womb then rich with my young squire would imitate and sail upon the land to fetch me trifles and return again as from a voyage rich with merchandise. But she, being mortal, of that child did die. And for her sake do I rear up the boy. And for her sake I will not part with him. Hugely poignant, I think. Hugely intimate to the emotional and sexual experience of women at the period. The love of the queen of the fairies for this earthly woman and the pain at the death of the mortal. The experience of women dying in childbirth was very frequent in Shakespeare's time. Another bonding is that of Amelia and Desdemona. Amelia is a servant, Desdemona her mistress. When it becomes clear that Othello suspects Desdemona of infidelity, Amelia has a suspicion as to how that might have happened. In this scene, I say Desdemona and Amelia and Iago are there, and the question comes, how could he ever suspect her? And Amelia begins to suspect. I'll be hanged, says she, if some eternal villain some busy and insinuating rogue, some cogging, cousining slave, to get some office have not devised this slander. I'll be hanged else. Her husband is nearby. It, she doesn't come to full consciousness, perhaps. Willingness to admit that somewhere there is a suspicion of her husband when Desdemona is dead, Amelia, in agony, as it comes clear that it was her husband who has done this, cries out, I thought so then! The fuller speech, villainy, 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 I think, Ponest, I think, I smell it, oh, villainy, I thought so then. I'll kill myself for grief. Caught up in her agony, her husband stabs and kills her to try to quiet her. 
both of them killed by their husbands, one through tormenting jealousy, the other out of an attempt at self-protection. One hears from honest Amelia the agony of one who has on some level suspected known but not allowed the suspicion to come to full consciousness, the agony at finding that I thought so then. And had she admitted to herself and pursued the idea and brought it out, her mistress might well be alive. Shakespeare is consummate too on the power of the binding of women in female relationships, in life, in their experience of life, and here agonizingly in their wrongful death. 